Let's go into our next question for the evening sent in by Caleb. Why is it that in the Bible, if you work it out, um, the earth is only a few thousand years old, but like according to the coal under the ground, the earth is billions or millions of years old? Caleb, thanks so much for sending that question in. Uh, Caleb is one of our matriculants um, here at New Life and oh, you're studying. I hope it's been going well. I know it's nearly finished. Exams are nearly over. And yeah, thanks for taking the time to send in such a, such a challenging question. You know, Dimitri, I think it's definitely something um, we need to answer because, you know, when we calculate the age of the earth according to the scriptures, it's very clear it's only a few thousand years old, but yet we've got signs and they say coal, we're saying it's millions of years old. And uh, yeah, what do the scriptures say? Well, yes, and um, Caleb, I encourage you and all believers always put God's word first. What does the Bible say? And then put everything else second or third, the coal included. And um, always remember when it does come to science, that um, there are some things that science cannot give conclusive answers to. They're all theories and as much as science and you can read them in your school textbook and they will say, you know, this is and they're presented as fact. It's often just theory if you get down to it. And um, scientific theories are, are being updated all the time. But uh, God's word is never updated. Um, it's, it's also dating the age of the earth is a very, very tricky endeavor mm. because... Um, you know, it, it, it's something like, you know, the earth, it's not like a coin that's got a date minted on such and such a year. Mm -hmm. um, earth doesn't tell you how old it is. And, um, you know, it's the same thing if I was to hold up an egg and um, I was to say, how old is this egg? And you might look at the egg and say, well, I, it's a few days. It looks like it's a few days. Someone else might say, well, it, it, it's a couple of months. Someone else could say a few years. Well, who can tell? Mm. Looks identical. You could weigh it, weigh the same, turn it around, look at it. You know, one egg can look, it could be a few days old. Another one can be a few years old and mm. it will look identical. So realize that, um, you know, the only person, okay, just think, if you wanted to know how old that egg was, go talk to the mother, okay? <laughs> Find out. Because, you know, I think only the mother would know. She was him. there. Yeah. Yes, she was there. Uh -huh. Okay. It's kind of like that scripture in, in, in Job 38 where the Lord is talking to Job. And he asks Job in the form of a question. And he says, you know, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? You know, tell me if you know. Um, and I think the Lord begs the same question to many people who would dare to kind of give a date um, of that yeah. as well. Yeah. You mentioned carbon, the coal. And um, that is something, and, and for years, it has been one of the science, their, their um, main ways of determining the age of fossils and everything. You hear them talking of radiocarbon dating or uranium dating. And um, w what that is, and, and I think sometimes, again, everything sounds very impressive, but when you go look into it and you realize, ah, a little bit of, a couple of holes here. Mm -hmm. Um, radiocarbon dating is, is um, what happens, okay, so some people, archaeologists find a fossil, uh, a bone or whatever, and so what they do to determine the age is they go and analyze it. Um, you got this, I used to use this when I was a chemist, it, it's called a, a, a mass spectrometer. And what you do is you can analyze atoms and um, just by the, the way, I'm not going to get into this, but like through, through ions and um, you can tell the, the, the rates and there are fixed rates of decay. So in other words, we talk about our half-life of carbon-14. So um, what that means is that let's just say in that bone, you've got, okay, hypothetically speaking, let's just say 40 grams of carbon-14, okay, it's half-life would be half of 40, 20 grams. Okay, so how long would it take to go from 40 grams to 20 grams of carbon-14? And so they um, use that, uh, that uh, spectrometer, analyze it, and it will give you, and you, you work out the weight, and the half-life of carbon-14 is about 5,730 years. So you can work out. Now, here's what's interesting. If you take and you say let's just take a okay, cat was you know 400 grams or whatever of carbon okay so half-life 5730 years later it's 200 grams 
5,000, it's 100 grams. 5,000 years, 50, okay, it goes down to when it's insignificant, which is about 20 half-lives. So when you add it all up, do the maths, and you realize that carbon dating, it's, it's only really good for 50,000 years. You can't go. So someone who says, I dated this, did carbon dating, and it's 3 million years old. Well, you go, hang on, we've got a problem here. Because carbon dating is, radiocarbon dating is only good up to that sort of period of time. Um, so there are a lot of assumptions. And um, what science are, are dividing, mostly science who, um, sign, you know, people in the scientific fields, who are either they've been brainwashed with evolutionary teaching and for evolution to be possible, animals to change into different species, which we never see that in nature. You know, cats don't become dogs. Um, you know, dogs don't become horses. We don't see that happening. Each, you know, sticks to its own species. But um, science have tried to justify that and say, well, uh, okay, maybe it, we don't see it happening in our lifetime, so let's just extend the time period. So for evolution to work, there has to be long time periods, millions, billions of years. Um, and so that's the reason why scientists are so sticky about saying, well, the earth is four billion years old or whatever. Um, and it's really good to know there's issues with radiocarbon dating. Um, and, and so on both sides, people acknowledge, look, it's, it's not always accurate. What I can remember in my years working with um, mass uh, spectrometers is that they're very prone to contamination. So you, you take your sample and if there's the slightest contaminant, your, your readings are completely off. So imagine someone takes a fossil and they want to date it and there's some contaminants in the fossil. It's going to set off and you're going to get wide variations with dates. Mm. So um, it's important to realize that. Let's turn to the Bible. Mm. The Bible is very clear on three things when you consider God's word. Okay. The first thing, God created everything. Very clear on that. The second thing, God did it in a very short time. In six days, God created the heavens and the earth. The third truth in the Bible is there was a great flood. So when archaeologists and, um, and, and science and people looking for fossils and they all dig down and they find this layer of whether it's dinosaurs, animals, all sorts of things and dead plant matter, that all is for us. It's just evidence of the great flood, that there was a flood, mud, sediment and all that. Remember all the creatures that were dying and everything. And so all compressed under layers of earth. And that is where our oil comes from. Crude oil really comes from all that decaying plant and animal life. And so uh, Bible very super clear about that. And um, Corrie, you got that scripture there. Yeah, Revelation 4 verse 11. It says, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, a beautiful verse. And that's revelation. So Genesis, you've got God created everything. Um, revelation is repeated. Jesus in the Gospels talking about God creating. In the book of Acts, Paul is standing at and saying God created everything. Uh, in the Psalms, you've got David saying God created. And so every voice in the Bible is saying God made everything. Isaiah mm -hmm. God created all things. Job, God created everything. And so that is pretty much what humanity believed right up until a couple of hundred years ago mm. when uh, science started turning away from God, turning away from the truth. And, um, and so then it began popular to question everything. And, you know, there was this age of enlightenment where everyone's trying to come up with new theories. And of course, Charles Darwin comes up with his theory of evolution. Everyone jumps at it because it seems so scholarly and plausible. Um, didn't matter that the missing link was always missing. You know, as long as there was a diagram or a picture, you know, people gravitated towards that. Now, mm. in Romans chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, Carl, you want to read that? Mm. And Paul says there, those who not glorify him as God, neither gave thanks, but became vain in their reasoning, and their senseless heart was darkened. 
professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Right. So, you know, the wise professors, but they are actually fools. And isn't it amazing how when they turn away from God, one of the judgments upon them is that their minds are darkened. Mm. And so what they think is fact is actually just complete fallacy, but they're believing mm. it themselves. This is the sad state of science professors, um, but, you know, science students um, trying to study and they all think, wow, evolution. It's so, and, you know, Earth millions, millions of years old. There is a lot of good evidence for an Earth that, you know, if you put the Bible together and you um, look, because remember, whenever the Bible speaks, it speaks truthfully. So when it speaks on history and it gives us the history of the world, we know it's accurate. And so when you take all the genealogies, um, starting from Adam, Eve and going on, Cain, Abel, and mm. you add up all the genealogies, like Corin was saying, how, how old is the earth about? About 6,000, 6, counting yes. from, the, from Adam and looking to the rain. Right, okay. So um, we've got a perfect timeline for creation. Now, what do we have to support that? Well, firstly, we've got the size of our population. Okay, world population is 7 billion plus. Okay, now 7 billion, if you work out every 150 years or so, the Earth's population doubles. So now if you go back and you take 150, 150, 100, and it would pretty much put you in a good space to where, you know, going right back to the time of Adam. And of course, you know, after Noah's Ark and eight people saved and their population increased, people were living slightly longer lifespans, but it fits. If the Earth was millions or billions of years old, the population on Earth should be far, far greater than what it is right now. So that's the first big um, uh, issue with that. The second is, um, and this is an interesting one, a, a bit of a, um, if you, you look at Earth and our moon, okay, now the moon is also in an orbit and every year the moon edges a little bit further and further away from the earth. This happens mm -hmm. every single year. In fact, the, it's the, someone has said it's the same rate as which your fingernails grow. So the earth goes and it's every year four centimeters plus minus four centimeters away. Now you take it and if you, you go, okay, now let's work backwards now. So four centimeters closer last year, the year before, four cent, 10 years ago, it was 40 centimeters, 100,000 Okay, now if evolution was true and it's millions of years old, that would have meant that Earth and the Moon would be like right together, you know, like next door neighbors. Okay, impossible because that would have, you know, thrown mm. the tides. I mean, we'd, we'd have tsunamis like every single day. So, no, mm. that wasn't it. And um, of course, another just a great discovery that was made. This was um, two, I think, 2005. In Montana, some paleontologists, they, they're busy digging around and guess what? They pull up a Tyrannosaurus Rex bone. And this bone is, I, I mean, this thing was like, you know, well, they dated and they said this thing is 86 million years old. But what was so unique is they could still see the blood vessels, hmm. the, the, the um, sinew on it. It was fresh and somehow wonderfully it had been preserved. But again, when you look at those kind of discoveries, you realize like, hey, you saying that's billions or millions of years old. It's impossible, but it does fit very well with mm -hmm. a young Earth, a 6,000 year Earth. Yeah. Um, Corin, you also had a bit of a yeah. nice thought on that. <laughs> you know, Dimitri, a lot of the, the scientific um, stuff, the mass spectrometer, I can't say I've ever used any of those or even understand really what it even looks like. But I think for me as a Christian, one of the things that really solidified my faith in, in understanding the, the biblical perspective of a, a 6,000 year old earth versus this concept of millions and millions is, you know, in Genesis, when, when the Lord is creating and it says, you know, he created and was morning and evening. So it was day one, you know, and he, he says that for every day. So a literal six days. And then you know, when God, the, one, the first day when he created um, the trees and the plants, 
that that day he created fully grown trees and fully grown plants. And the day he created animals, they were fully grown. And so on the first day of a lion's life, he had the appearance of a fully grown adult lion, but he was actually only one day old. So if someone were to look at that lion and go, wow, this lion is, you know, 15 years old. You are going to know he's actually three hours old because God just made him. And the same concept for Adam, you know, on day six, when God created Adam and then eventually Eve, we know that God created Adam as a fully grown man with that appearance of age. Um, he didn't grow as, he didn't, wasn't like a newborn baby on day one. And then he, you know, took So you're saying when Adam celebrated his first birthday? Yeah. Okay, when so Adam, birthday cake, yeah, one candle. You know, and he, he was a fully grown man. And, and when God created Eve out of Adam's rib, that first day, Eve was a fully grown woman with maturity of whatever age Adam and Eve were that day. And so for me, like I've really, I had to, like, I just love that because God created everything with age. He created the trees fully grown. There was fruit on the trees. Adam and Eve didn't have to wait for like five harvest times before anything grew. And, and so mm, even just that where God on day one, everything had the appearance of age. And so, you know, that just, God is awesome like that. How, you know, the fish were fully grown fish. They weren't little embryos or tadpoles. They were fully grown frogs that were, you know, so, so that for me yes. is something that's really helped me confirm God. Yes, it might appear, but God created it 6,000 mm. years ago. Yeah. These, um, Caleb, I hope that answers your question. But folk, um, these, these creation questions, Book of Genesis questions, very, very good. Um, I want to recommend two resources for you. Answers in Genesis. Mm. Go look at their website. A lot of good scientists and scientific um, articles that are there. Creationministries.com. You can have a look. But send us your questions. We do enjoy answering those creation ones too. Mm. 